welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We're here to talk about MIFA loans and what's new for 2022 and 2023 for this upcoming academic year. We have over 100 people registered for today's training from all over the country. So welcome. Thank you for you know, tuning in. Uh, I'm going to jump right in, let everybody know that this session is being recorded. So we'll share a link to the recording as well as copies of the PowerPoint slides probably tomorrow. So thank you again for joining us. So we just introduced all of our great panelists and, and we all introduced ourselves. So, uh, you know, we have a great breadth of experience here on the panel today from MIFA and from ELM. So a little bit about MIFA, for those of you who aren't as familiar with MIFA, we are a national lender here located in Boston. We have been around since 1982, so really, you know, pioneers in the industry. We've been, we've been out there doing loans for a very long time. We're actually created by colleges and universities here in Massachusetts to offer a loan program back in 1982 that was low cost for families. And since then, we've gone on to grow, add savings plans, guidance and education, as well as loans for graduate students and refinance loans. So I'll go through those details in a minute. So here's what we're going to talk about today. We want to make sure that you understand our new rates and loan details and, and any processing requirements that might be um, you know, important for you to know. I do want to start off highlighting our tools and guidance that make MIFA you know, more than just a lender. We do a lot of guidance and education at MIFA that I don't think a lot of folks at colleges know as well because you know we're working with you as a lender for the most part but we do a lot more than that so i do want to show you a little bit about that and talk about certification options and darina is going to talk a little bit about you know the details of the certifications and what you're signing off on when you certify loan refunds and reductions uh, karen is going to talk about towards the end a little bit about you know the sp specific requirements that might be in elm um, you know things that we get a lot of questions about and then Meg, for those who aren't using Elm, we'll do a quick demo of MIFA's online, call, uh, online portal so you can certify through that system. So let's get started and feel free if you have questions to type those in the question box and we will answer those as we go and leave some time at the end as well. So I have a couple slides here with a bunch of bullets and a bunch of language on there about all the different things that MIFA does. So I'll let you read those bullets when we give you that PowerPoint slide, but I'm gonna jump right on our website and show you what, what we're talking about here. So this is MIFA's homepage, and we really have a philosophy at MIFA planning, saving, and then paying for college. So any step that families might find themselves in at any point in the college enrollment process, from the time the child is born until they graduate, MIFA is there to help with products, guidance, and education. So if we look at just you know, the planning piece of it, I'll just highlight one, one little small piece uh, for each section here about college planning and resources. MIFA does a lot with blogs from experts and education, webinars, videos, podcasts, social media content, all for all different ages uh, of, of child that is planning for college. So here you can see just in our college planning area, you can choose, well, how old is the child? What information is right for you at this time? So if we're looking at, let's say, you know, the child was just born or it's a you know, smaller child here, we can look at pre-K and elementary school. What do parents of students of, or children of those ages need to know? And we are big at MIFA believing in educating people early with savings information, with guidance, so that when it comes time to pay the college bill, even though we're a lender, we want them to borrow less, not more. So whatever we can do to educate families about borrowing uh, at earlier stages and planning, then we like to do that. And then if we look at uh, savings, I'm gonna show you our savings calculator real quick. And this is a great tool for families who want to just start thinking about, okay, if I put in $100 or $50 a month, where am I going to be uh, in a few years? So I'll just show you that real quick. I'll put in $50 and I have a newborn. So I'm going to start planning now. And this calculator will show you, you know, what your contribution will be, what you might earn in interest and where to go from there. So start the planning now uh, and the best ways to save. So you can see you know, we're, we're guiding them to all the different things they need to think about when saving. 
projecting out those costs, looking at net price calculators on your websites to project out costs, savings estimators, all kinds of guidance and education. We also have the UPlan prepaid tuition plan, and we also run MIFA, the Massachusetts 529 plan, which is the UFUN, and that's managed by Fidelity Investments. So that's a quick you know, snapshot of a couple of tools that are among the many here. So you can see we have scholarship searches, we have MIFA Pathway, which is a college and career portal, free of charge for those uh, who are here at high schools in the Commonwealth. And we have a whole team that runs this portal and works directly with high schools. It's very similar to Naviance. Many of you may know that brand name, um, but the difference here is that it's free. So we work very closely with school counselors uh, to help them educate their students and families as well. And then I mentioned we have the U plans and the U fund savings plans, but we also have a program called Attainable, the Attainable Savings Plan, which is an ABLE program. It's a program that can help folks with disabilities save on their own up to $100,000 without it affecting their SSI benefits. They can save more than 100, but um, if you're familiar with you know, the attainable world, and for folks who might be on SSI, if they save more than $2,000, they might, you know, have some benefits paused or taken away. With this plan, they can save up to 100000 without it affecting their benefits, which is really key for folks. And it's not just for college. It's for all kinds of, you know, living expenses, transportation, medical expenses. So it's beyond your regular 529 plan. Um, so we have all of that great information about our attainable savings plan here as well. So then once they've looked at savings, we can look at you know how to pay for college. Okay, what are we gonna do? Now we have a college bill coming down the road. So we have all kinds of great information here. What I do wanna just show you real quick, one of my favorite tools on the MIFA site is our college cost calculator. So this is a great tool where families can plug in all of their financial aid offers when they get them and really compare the cost for each school, how much they're getting in grants and scholarships, either from the federal and state government as well as the school. And then what are they looking at for loans at each school or work study? Maybe they have savings, 529 plans they can plug in here. And it will show them a great comparison of all of those awards or offers side by side. So they're really just looking at those numbers and trying to narrow down that list. One of my favorite tools that I love to use one-on-one -on -one with families. So that gives you just a general high level overview. I'm gonna show you a payment calculator that I love, um, and, but we have undergraduate loans, graduate loans, as well as refinancing loans as well. So that's a real quick and dirty about what MIFA does as well. You can see the bullets here on our PowerPoint talks about as well, but I think it's much better to just go right on our website and click and play. And just to really understand that MIFA is more than just a lender, we are a nonprofit quasi-state authority here to help educate and, and provide guidance. That's our biggest product, if you will. And then we have loans and savings plans as well. So we'll, we'll focus on the loans here, the MIFA loans. We do offer loans for undergraduate and graduate students. All of our interest rates are fixed. So we, we don't have the variable rates. It's not affected by market volatility. Our new rates for this year, we're very proud to continue to offer really low cost loans. You can see the rates here. So for undergraduate students, the rates range from 4.89% to 6.99%. And I'm just gonna click on this real quick Oops. to show you. Oops, here. Okay, here we go to show you our rates right on our website so you can see it here. So this is our undergraduate student loan page. And if I scroll down, I'm gonna demo our student loan payment calculator on the next slide, but I just want you to see what we have here. So we have immediate repayment, 10 and 15 year options, interest only, as well as deferred and deferred with a cosigner release. So you can see if you're looking at the interest rate ranges, it does go up as folks push out repayment you know, 10 years or defer, uh, you know, with a 15 year loan or interest only, you can see that. And we do let folks know if they choose a more expensive option, 
um, that they are choosing a, you know, a deferred loan with a higher rate versus our immediate repaying loan that has a lower interest rate. And you can see the range, 4.89% to 6.99%. When we're looking at tiered interest rates, uh, whether it's at MIFA or through another lender, most folks are gonna fall in the middle. So MIFA's range is very narrow, 489 to 6.99. If they're following in the middle, even before they even apply, you know that they're getting a pretty good rate, much lower than the federal plus loan at 7.54%. No fees with the MIFA loan, whereas the plus loan we know has over 4% fee. Um, so you know if you have MIFA on your lender list, if you're talking about MIFA with families, we know you can't recommend one lender over another, but you can feel good knowing that they're not gonna be looking at double digit interest rates. Uh, if you look at the, the spread on other loan programs out there in the community, you could be looking maybe at a lower four to 13% interest rate. So folks are gonna fall much higher if that middle range, the bigger the range, the, the higher their middle uh, rate range is gonna be. So we feel really good about the rates that we offer. And we're always looking to offer some of the lowest rates in the industry. And then folks can also see the details here about the loan. You know, a lot of the questions that they may have for you, it's all right here. You know, if they're talking about the loan, the eligibility requirements, uh, Doreen is going to talk a little bit about that as well. We need to be enrolled at least half time, for example. Repayment options and guidance about repayment options. Uh, and I do want to point out that our disclosure statements are right there, front and center, easy to find. You don't have to, you know, do a hard search to find our disclosure statements. We want folks to know where they are and to know what they're um, looking at. We actually have a great webinar that we did, a couple of them, one in June and one in July, for families about disclosures and comparing loan options. And we went right on and showed some disclosure statements and pointed out all the things that they should be looking at when they're comparing loan options and looking at those disclosures. So we are definitely all about providing upfront information uh, for students and families about that. So I mentioned with MIFA, no, no fees, no prepayment penalties. They have a variety of repayment options to look at. The one thing we do wanna let folks know that not everybody is aware of is that this loan is available to folks all over the country. So we became a national lender in June of 2019. So wherever, wherever your college is located, it doesn't matter if they're mass residents or not, they can use the MIFA loan. So as long as they're US citizens or permanent residents and they're at an eligible college here in the United States, your students can use a MIFA loan, all of your students. Uh, so it doesn't have to have a Massachusetts connection. So folks, we, you know, as we're talking to folks, they're not necessarily aware of that. You know, we sent the email out in 2019, MIFA's a national lender. And so we definitely need to keep promoting that so that folks that might not be aware of that understand that even though we might be a state authority, we're, you know, we're MIFA, we, we can be used anywhere in the country. And we are working obviously with a lot of you all over the country, which has been really fun for us to uh, meet lots of new people outside our region. So I, I mentioned MIFA.org is a great resource for families. You can put that on your website and know that family is going to get a lot of great guidance and education. We do a number of programs throughout um, the year at different points, webinars, videos, podcasts, everything families need is right there on our website. So definitely, you know, point them in that direction. Our goal at MIFA is to make sure that families and students understand what they're doing to try and minimize borrowing, get them some great education on combination strategies, using your school's payment plan, trying to tap into savings before they borrow. So even though we are a lender, our guidance and education is very much focused on reducing borrowing and borrowing as a last resort. That's really critical to our message uh, for families. And the other thing that, that families will get if they borrow through MIFA beyond just a low cost loan as they're gonna have access to a team of uh, professionals that know these programs and can provide guidance over the phone. We can set up Zoom meetings if they need an in-depth one-on-one appointment, they can schedule that with us. And so you can feel good knowing that families who are connected with MIFA are gonna be getting great email curriculum about you know, debt management, financial literacy for students and families. 
excuse me about that. My dog is barking. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so guidance and education, blogs, videos, and other content that families can use throughout this process. So I just want to show you real quick our student loan payment calculator that I mentioned. And I'm going to demo that for you. So with this calculator, you can um, use this with families. I use it all the time when I'm trying to educate families. And it's a great tool just to run the numbers. So if I'm looking at, let's say, a loan for $20,000, and I put that in here, and I am a, my student's a freshman, so I'll put in four years before graduation. Folks can decide, you know, based on credit, where they might fall as far as interest rates go. So I'm just going to set select very good right in the middle there, how we are um, calculating our interest rates. And folks can see before they even apply, what am I looking at for a rate if I have good credit or very good credit? We know that most folks are not gonna get that lowest rate with any lender, not just with NIFA, because the credit criteria is higher. Uh, and mo fo most folks are gonna fall in the middle. So if I select the middle credit, that should be good just to show where mo most folks are gonna fall. So if we're looking at, let's say our lowest interest rate, a 10 year loan, 5.99% of rates did go up a smidge this year, just like the plus loan and you know every lender's rates have gone up um, across the board with inflation. So, so we did look at that, but our rates are still, as I mentioned, lower than the plus loan at 7.54%. So you're looking at over a percent and a half difference with our 10 year loan versus a plus loan. That's also a 10 year repayment and no fees with the MIFA loan. So you can see, we always are showing families with this calculator, what is your total cost going to be? You know, look at that affordable monthly payment, but we also want them to know after they've borrowed their loan, what are they paying in principal and interest? What is that $20,000 loan going to cost? And we want that to be up front and center so they know what they're getting themselves into. So that's really, really important to MIFA. So let's see here. So we're going to talk about... Uh, Feel free, as I meant, I don't know if I mentioned that, but feel free to put your questions in the Q&A. If you have any questions, we can stop throughout. I'll make sure I'm monitoring that. And we'll leave time at the end for questions as well. So with MIFA, you have two ways of certifying our loans. Most of our loans, now that we partner with ELM, um, are certified through ELM. But most of the schools that we work with um, are using ELM. We know that a lot of schools are using ScholarNet as well. And, and for those of you who use ScholarNet, we are looking at that as an, as an option in the future, but we definitely won't have that available for this uh, processing season. So we started working with Elm in July of 2020. We had lots of schools, especially in the Northeast, you know, begging us for years to start allowing them to certify through Elm. And we can also disperse through Elm one as well. So electronically. So if you're using Elm, you can certify through your MIFA loans through Elm. We, did, uh, we do ask that you process MIFA loans as a parent loan or a sponsor loan. Uh, parent or anyone who's credit worthy is usually gonna be co-signing with the student. So the student is on the MIFA loan. We really look at that as a family loan, but it should be processed like a parent loan. And so I'm just gonna click on this real quick. We have a college administrator section here and you can see all of our Q and A's about processing through Elm. So all of that is right here. If you ever have questions, you can call us, you can call Elm, we're there to help you. I do wanna point out while I'm here, our college administrator page. So this is your go-to spot that you can bookmark. It's gonna have everything you need. So we have our rates here for 22, 23. We have our training right now, you can register there. And we also have our online certification options our MIFA portal, which Meg's going to talk about as well as Elm. So you can log in here to the MIFA portal. If you're doing that, you can add new users here, set up wire transfers, EFT, uh, electronically, all of that great information is here. FAQs as well as watching a demo on how to certify in our portal. And I mentioned through Elm, I already showed you the Elm FAQs. But we also have our MIFA loan eligibility criteria is right here, easy to find for you. But feel free, you know, you want to pick up the phone or, or send us a quick email. We're always happy to, um, you know, help you out with that as well. Our disclosures right there, as well as trainings. And uh, here in Massachusetts, we have a lot of schools who are using the UPlan, their UPlan partners. So we have that information here as well. 
So all of that is right there for you, easy to find. Um, so I'll let you, you know, play around um, there, but you can find our rates there as well. So let me just go back to our PowerPoint here. So that's a quick and dirty about Elm and, and Meg and Dorina and Karen. I'm going to get into more detail about that. We also have, if you're not using Elm or if you're a scholar at school, you can certify very easily online through our portal. And I just showed you how you can add new users and log in there on our college administrator page. Um, and we also have, you know, we strongly recommend that folks disperse via EFT if they're not using L. And the reason why is that if you're dispersing through EFT, electronic versus check, you're going to get your money the day of. So for portal users, we disperse on Fridays. If you're dispersing through check, we're going to mail that check the following business day, which is probably going to be Monday, Tuesday on a long weekend. So, and then it has to go through snail mail to get to your campus. So we definitely encourage folks to sign up for electronic disbursements. You know, you can do that right here, our wire transfer form, very easy to find. And I'll just show you, oh, of course, it's not working for me right now. <laughs> the hyperlink's not working, but it's right there on that college administrator page. So a little bit of guidance when you're certifying a MIFA loan, whether it be through ELM or the MIFA portal, um, you're certifying that the student is not borrowing more than cost of attendance minus financial aid. So that's important. We do collect the cost of attendance and the estimated financial aid. When you're certifying in ELM, it's automatically, if you're certifying right on, certifying right on ELM 1, it will you know, require you to put that in. If you're sending a file to Elm, and Karen's gonna talk about this in a little bit, um, you know, you can, sometimes if you don't put in this information, it will flag it and you have to get that information from you. We'll follow up with you. So the student has to be enrolled at least half time in a degree granting program and making satisfactory academic progress as defined by your school. So I wanna to touch upon, and I know to, Darina is going to mention this as well. For the summer, we're in summer right now. Um, it's very hot in Massachusetts right now. Hopefully, uh, some of you are staying cool in other regions of the country, but a lot of students are looking at loans for summer school. We know that they might not only be applying for a class or two, so they're not going to be enrolled at least half time during the summer for most students, and that's okay. They can still use the MIFA loan for summer school, but just certify them that they are enrolled at least half time based on the academic year enrollment. So you can do that. If you certify it's less than half time, it will flag the account and you'll have to update that. So definitely you can recommend the MIFA loan for summer school. Not a problem if they're enrolled less than half time for summer school. For a past due balance, we can also do loans for past due balances. Our criteria for that is that the student needs to be currently enrolled and it needs to be for the current academic year. So those are our two criteria there. Now I do have a question that I want to uh, share with everybody. It says, do you have a loan where student is the borrower with a parent is the co-signer? And that is the MIFA loan. That's essentially what the MIFA loan is. We don't um, differentiate who has more responsibility than the other. The way we look at it is it's a family loan and the student's usually gonna need a credit worthy co-signer for an undergraduate loan to get approved because they don't have established credit in most situations. So we look at that as a family loan where anybody who signed on the dotted line for that loan, it has equal responsibility. So it, you can term it however you want, but at the end of the day, the student and a credit worthy co-borrower are usually gonna be on that loan. Okay, great. Another quick question we have is, do you have a co-bar, do you allow for a co-bar release? And the answer to that is yes. We do have a deferred option, repayment option that they can choose that has a co-bar release after 48 on-time payments. Now, that is the highest rate, I will mention. And I do talk to families who are looking at that co-bar release and say, you know, if you really want to get off the loan, the student could also always refinance their MIFA loans to take mom or dad off the loan a year after graduating, as long as they've been in repayment for you know a good six months after they graduate, they can refinance the loan. So you can do that maybe at a lower cost than you know taking the um, COBAR release option up front. 
So good question. Another question about um, student enrollment during the summer term. So they wanted me to clarify, it's only if the student is in their summer term that they can be enrolled less than half time. If it's a winter term, you know, a, a three week course or something, you could do the same there, but just certify it that they are enrolled half time uh, or else the system will block it and we'll have to get in touch with you. So hopefully that clarifies uh, what I was talking about, but it's really just the summer term. If it's fall or spring, they do have to be enrolled at least half time. but great questions, keep them coming. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over to Darina. She is gonna talk about um, a, few, a few important tips here. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, so in this slide, I'm just gonna talk about loan reductions and refunds. Um, so the first thing that I just wanna mention is just a message that we've been trying to get out to families and we also wanna make sure we get it out to our schools as well, is that we do understand that plans change um, for any academic year that families are applying for. So when they are applying and they're kind of hesitant about how much to borrow, um, they can feel secure in knowing that even if they uh, apply for a certain amount, if it does need to be reduced at any point, um, no interest is gonna accrue until the disbursement is sent to you guys. Um, and even if the disbursement is sent to you guys, you can send us a refund. And once we receive the refund, the interest will be reversed on the refunded amount. Um, so just trying to get that message out to families. We get a lot of questions around this time about, you know, how much should I borrow? And what if I don't end up needing the money? You know, I don't wanna end up with a big balance that I actually didn't need the money for. So we just wanted to highlight that for you all. Um, so in terms of making loan reductions, so we always advise that if you know a family needs to reduce the loan to try to get that done before the loan starts to disperse. And you can do that on the platform form that you process loans with us. So if you're in Elm school, you can go ahead and do that in Elm. And if you are processing on our online certification system, you can go ahead and do that on there as well. But if you do need to um, reduce a loan after it disperses, um, here's kind of how you can do it. So if you're in Elm school, you can send us a refund via NGN. Um, and what we just want to know is that we usually process those refunds that are sent to us via NDN on Wednesdays. So if you put the request in, um, you send us the money on Friday and you don't see any changes, um, don't be alert. We are, we've probably received the money. We're going to be processing it on Wednesdays. Um, and always just call us if you don't see the change reflect. Um, because we don't want you to put the change twice and then the loan goes down twice. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you put a change request for a refund and you don't see that the amount is reflected, always give us a call or just think, um, is it Wednesday yet? Maybe Mifa hasn't processed it. So I just wanted to point that out to you all. Um, and if you are a school that processes on our online certification system, you have two options on how to send us a refund. So you can send it to us via uh, electronic. And I believe Stephanie um, has kind of shown a little bit of where it that form lives. So it's gonna be on that college administrator page. Um, and there's a link directly to that form that you would use to send us a refund electronically. Um, and if you didn't wanna do that, you can always send us a check. We just ask ask that you attention to loan refunds so that our finance team can see that and get that process for you right away. I think you're on mute, Stephanie. Sorry about that. We do have one question that I wanna just address before we go to the next okay. slide so we don't get too far ahead. <clears throat> so I have a question here. If a student borrows a loan for a past due balance, do they have to use the previous year loan period? And the answer to that is with our with our past due balance policy, the past due balance has to be within the current academic year. So for example, if it's January and the student owes money for the fall, that, that would be considered a past due balance for us. If it was the previous spring, so you know, let's say it was 21, 22 academic year and now we're in 22, 23, 
then you wouldn't be able to use the MIFA loan for that. It has to be within the current academic year that you're at. Um, so that's the per loan period you would use. Um, and Doreen is gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second, so I don't wanna steal her thunder, but feel free to type another question in um, yeah. when we're done if you need clarification. Let me go to the Stephanie, next one. Stephanie, I'm just gonna add to that in terms of our past two, because we do get this question a lot is, um, like Stephanie said, it has to be within the current academic year. And we also require that the student is currently enrolled in order for the loan to be certified because um, the disbursement has to fall within the certified loan period. Yeah, so I just wanted key. to add that as well. Yeah, that's key. It has to fall within the certified loan period. So for example, right now, if you were you know, processing a loan for the spring, you know, maybe a summer loan um, and it was a May, June loan period for a summer school, for example, it, we're, now we're in July, so you'd have to certify that the loan period ends in July so that we can disperse it now that we're in July. So that's a good example. Okay, go ahead, Darina, keep going. Thank you. Um, I believe this is not my slide. This is Karen, yep, sorry. Yep, so Karen, you wanna talk a little bit about this and some of the, some of the these are big FAQs that we commonly get um, at MIFA. Yep, absolutely. Um, so yeah, uh, Stephanie did mention earlier that the loans on ELM should, <coughs> excuse me, should be processed as parent loans. If you're working in a financial aid management system, um, that may require some extra setup on that side, or you can just certify the loan on, on the ELM system. If you need help with that, let us know. Um, I think the uh, you may have already mentioned this as well that the the estimated financial aid and the cost of attendance is required for MIFA loans and Elm has put in edits so that if you're certifying that loan on Elm you will be required to put those fields in before you can click the certify button. Additionally, if you send us a file that does not have cost of attendance and EFA in there, we will place it in the exception queue so that you can go in then and add those before it goes on the MIFA. So that's, um, that's an important uh, piece that we added uh, recently. I guess you could say last year, we added that feature for you all. And then, um, 100,000 uh, or more uh, loans are not managed by common line. We are working on um, figuring something out, but it's gonna have to be a solution for the whole industry. So it's one of those slow moving things, but uh, the MIFA portal, since it's directly on their system can handle it. It doesn't have to go through that common line process. So make sure you do that. Then MIFA will send us the information through Elm. And, um, we do get that question a lot too, as far as that last bullet point, can we do an increase on the loan once it's fully dispersed? Um, you cannot, however, you can up until that point, until it's fully dispersed. So if you need help doing that on Elm, just let us know at the National Service Center and we can help you with that. So. Yeah, thank you, Karen, this is all, all great points. Um, and I do wanna reiterate that $100,000 marker it, it, as Karen mentioned, that's an industry-wide issue. It's not a MIFA-specific or ELM issue. It's, it's a common line um, issue. So that's why if you're processing via file or processing on ELM, it's, you know, you're not going to be able to do that over 100000 And we do have quite a lot of schools who have programs that are cost more than that. So definitely it's easiest to just log into our portal. We can set you up and you'll still get your money through ELM. You'll still see the loans on ELM. It's just that you might have to certify that one in the portal, it'd be easier that way. Uh, great, okay, thank you, Karen, that was super helpful. We always love having Karen on these trainings so that if there's a tricky Elm question that comes up, uh, we can handle that. So let me just turn the driving wheel over to Meg because she is going to um, do this here. Okay, Meg, you should be able to control yep, the screen now. There we go, awesome. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see the, the school portal. 
Um, so this, when you log into the portal, this is kind of the, the homepage. Um, and the, the thing we hear about the MIFA portal a lot is that it's very straightforward and easy to use. So I think you'll see that as we you know, go through this little demo. So here we are. Um, so you can, if you wanted to search for a particular student, up top here, you could search by their social, by MIFA's application ID, or by part of their name or, or their phone name. Um, another way, once you're logged in, you can always just go to your Certify Loans page. So if we go here, what you'll get is a list of all loans that are pending certification for your school. So, you know, this is a test account, so there's just one, but you might log in and there might be a whole list of them. So a couple of things here, you can certify right from this screen. If you click um, on this little box on the left, you can go ahead and put in all the required fields right here and send the certification through. We, I also wanted to point out that you could cancel a loan right from the screen. You can click the cancel button here um, and that will take it off of the list um, and, and cancel it. Another option is if you click on the student's name here, this we call the loan detail page. So on this page, you just get a little more information um, about the, the loan. You can see you know, um, demographic information. You would see if there were co-borrowers. You can see the program type. So for example, this is a graduate interest only loan. Um, and then you, these are the certification fields down here in the school information section. So we'll go ahead and certify this loan. Um, this is the loan period um, is pulled from the application. So this student, it looks like they applied for a fall loan. So we have to go ahead and put in a graduation date. And then these are all required fields as you can see by the little asterisk. So the student level is required. There's a drop down here and you can pick from the list. The enrollment status uh, is required. So full um, or half time is required. And then over here, um, as Stephanie mentioned and Darina as well, you know, cost of attendance and financial aid are required on the MIFA loans. So we can go ahead and put in some cost of attendance and financial aid. The school portal does the math for you. So it will make the, you know, calculate the maximum eligibility. And then you can put in the, the certified amount. One question that we get often is um, how do you add a second disbursement to a loan? So say you know you uh, decided for whatever reason you wanted to change this to a full year loan period, not a fall loan. So you can go and make the adjustment on the loan period. And then in terms of adding a disbursement, there's a little link down here. Um, and I think some people miss it. So you can add a disbursement. That brings another disbursement. You could add up until four disbursements. And then you can move the money and the dates around accordingly. So there's a little tool here that would split the, the certified amount across the disbursements. And then um, you can go ahead and select disbursement dates. And then once that's done, you would hit continue. And as we talked about earlier in the presentation by certifying these loans, um, you know, there are some statements here that it's been certified for an amount equal to or less than 100% of the cost of attendance, less financial aid, and then also that the students enrolled at least half time in a credited degree granting program. So we can go ahead, if everything looks good here, we can go ahead and submit it. And that's done, it goes you know, right through, it's real time, it will update our system. So now you can see that the loan is approved for disbursement. Um, and here it is. So if for whatever reason, um, you, know, you had done this certification, it's a couple of days later, and you wanted to go back and make changes to it, you can certainly do that. Um, you can pull it up either by name or by MIFA's application ID. So here it is. And up until you know, the loan is um, disperses, you can change any of the fields, loan period, cost of attendance. You, know, you could increase it to the full amount if it hadn't been certified already. Um, or, or then one other thing I wanted to point out, because I think sometimes um, we get questions on this, say something changed and you have to cancel the loan. You can go ahead and click this cancel button and that would cancel it. It would give it a status loan terminated by school. Now, another thing that, that we get questions on is what if something changed again and you wanted to go back in and reinstate this loan? So you actually are able to do that right through the, the portal. There's this little button here, right where the cancel button was that says reinstate. So um, you can go ahead and reinstate it. 
Um, and then you would just have to, you know, confirm um, this one had already been certified. So the, the field's already full. If it had been canceled before it was certified, it would be blank. In any event, you can, um, you know, fill up, fill up the certification fields. And now it's back to approve for disbursement. So that, that really is the, the portal. Um, in a nutshell, as we say, the feedback that we've heard is that it's very easy to use um, and straightforward. Meg, do you want to just show them real quick uh, the dispersion roster? Sure. So that's a good point. There's two, there's two other kind of functions here. One is a loan status report um, that we'll just look at real briefly, where you can run a report um, based on you could do it, you know, for all loans at your school or for, you know, if you wanted to see only fully dispersed loans. Um, so you could go here. Another um, thing what Stephanie just mentioned is, is this is where if you're getting MIFA disbursements, MIFA internal disbursements, um, whether it's by what if it's by EFT, you would you would get your disbursement rosters by coming here and pulling them down. So you'd get an email when there's a roster ready to download and you can just log in. I'm not sure in test here if we have any um, disbursements. So you know it's there for them. It, exactly. Also, so they, I'll, yeah, oh, sorry, me. I'll also add, I'll let, you, I'll let you go. So basically, you know, you would put in the, the, um, the date that you're looking for. I did kind of a, a range here just to see if we have any. So there were no records found, but if, because this is a test environment, um, if you did have a roster, it would pop up here on the screen and then you'd also have the option to uh, download it in an Excel sheet, um, you know, to do whatever you need to sort it however you need it. So that's, um, those are the functions, the loan status report and the disbursement roster. That's great. Thank you so much, Meg. Of course. Okay, I think you need to hand the reins back over to me. <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> Excellent, there we go. All right, let me uh, share my screen real quick here. And we have a few questions, so I'll get into those. Okay, so we had the screenshots in case we needed that. So we're gonna do Q and A in a sec. I just wanna point out all of our social media channels. If you like podcasts, listen to our podcast. We have uh, my colleague, Jonathan Hughes. We get a lot of great reviews about his podcasts, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. Uh, all of our webinar videos are on our YouTube channel. So definitely connect with us there. So we're gonna do some Q and A now, in, but we did want you to have our contact information. So at MIFA, we, you can reach us through MIFA certified MIFA.org. That's our college administrator uh, email box. And Dorina and I and Meg are always monitoring that as well as um, our phone number there. College administrators are the first option in the queue. So your option number one. And then we also have uh, the Elm contact information here too, if you need to get in touch with them. So I have two questions here, but feel free folks to type them in. So, I, and I think both of these are for you, Karen. <laughs> um, so I have one question where it says, do you have a loan where, uh, hold on, let's see. Can you, uh, let me get to this, uh, here it goes. Our loan periods are fixed. Does that mean that we can't certify a loan for past due balances? Um, and I am I believe that, I'm assuming that they're in Elm School and probably certifying via file. Uh, so they might have fixed you know, loan periods in their system. So could you address that, Karen? Um, I think, so if your loan periods are fixed, for example, if you have a fall spring or a spring only or a fall only, I think what um, Stephanie and um, the team there at MIFA is saying is if you have a spring only term, you would want to, if you're applying for loans for a past due fall, then you would use the fall spring loan period. So um, I'm not sure, maybe we need more clarification. Yeah, I just got a, a message that they don't use Elm. So yeah, your loan periods are what they are, but you can certify a loan period in our system outside of your typical loan period. So if your spring loan period is January to May, but then the student, you know, it's June 1st, you can certify the loan from January to June so that we can start, we can disperse it in June. It's just with, our system, you have the loan has to be dispersed within the certified loan period. There's no way around that. Um, so, and usually, you know, loan periods should be fairly flexible. As far as our system, you can put in 
you know, the loan period that is going to help the student get their loan. Great. So let's see, we have another question. And um, this one is uh, also partly for Karen. So I'll answer half of it and you can answer the other half. So can a loan be reinstated on the MIFA portal if it was originally certified in ELM? And the answer to that is yes, you can do anything in the MIFA portal if it was certified in ELM. Correct me if I'm wrong, Meg, but I believe you can still do that. Correct. So Karen, how would they reinstate a loan in ELM? Yeah, you can still re you can also reinstate it in ELM. If the whole loan was canceled um, or the disbursements are canceled, you would uh, type in the or go into the student's record and then under the drop down that has disbursement canceled there is a reinstate button so you should be able to just reinstate the loan there excellent great so whichever way is easiest mm -hmm. um, so thanks tracy for that qu good question so i don't see any other questions but i'm going to leave it open for another two seconds if anybody has any feel free to type those in but you also have our contact information here if you need to get in touch with us. So as I mentioned earlier, we did record today's session and we'll email you a link to everybody who registered as well as copy of the slides. So you'll have that, it'll probably go out tomorrow. Uh, any last words, Karen, Drina, L, um, Meg? I think we're good, okay, excellent. So I don't see any other questions coming in. So I'm gonna end the webinar for everybody. But I want to thank you for joining us today. It was great to see so many people logging in and we are boiling up here in Massachusetts over 100 degrees with humidity. So I hope everybody else nationwide is staying cool inside and getting along okay in this heat. Uh, let's see. Excellent. So have a great day, everybody. And call us if you need us and have a great summer. Thank you.